Someone else? got needs on our heart, we've got people on our heart, we've got families on our heart. Uh, so the best thing we can do, those people that we care, those situations we care so much about, putting them in God's hands is the best place for them. And we care is because we pray. We pray because we care. If you feel like gathering in on the altar, you all do that. Uh, let's gather in. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Rob, lead us if you would.
asking things for months. Uh, some of the things are fairly new. I'm looking forward to getting in whenever God will give us the opportunity. Book of Job tonight, chapter 42. Book of Job, chapter 42. Last chapter of Job. Job 42. If you're able tonight, let's stand together. Job 42. The last three verses, verses 15, 16, and 17. Job 42, last three verses, 15, 16, 17, we read this way. And in all, uh, in all the land were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them the inheritance among their brethren. After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died. Being old and full of days, that is the Bible's way of saying he lived a good life. Yeah, yeah. That's the reading of God's word. You can be seated if you would. I want to give you the thought tonight, if we can. Uh, this has been stirring in my soul for a long time. Now, I have skimmed it here at the church a few times, and I, I look to get in and finish this tonight, but I want God to speak to us. That's been my prayer all day long. Uh, I want to give you this thought. Pay attention to those that are forgotten. Pay attention to those that are forgotten. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate this scripture. I do. Uh, real quick, because it's Thursday night and we, we, we teach some, and I, I feel fine doing this on Sunday morning too. I would. Uh, we're in what book? What book are we reading out of? Job. Book of Job. What a wonderful book. Uh, and in case you're wondering, if folks are wondering if it's right to work or not for a living, God named a book Job, so you get a job. <laughs> um, well, anyway, um, what a wonderful thing. Book of Job, this man named Job is heavily, he, he's, he dominates this whole book. From chapter 1 to chapter 42, it's all about Job. Um, I, I want to say this, and I'm stuttering because there, there's a lot in me, and I've got to figure out how to get it out. Um, I'll give you this. Pay attention to those that suffer in silence. Um, I, I have paid a lot of attention the past number of months to people um, and their positive qualities that maybe you and I forget about. Uh, for example... Uh, me and some ladies have been hanging out. And I haven't told Faith, but I'm telling her now, this is a bad time to do that. Um, me, and, me, and, uh, me and Bathsheba, we, we've spent some time together. Me and Esther, we're starting to hang out a lot. And Faith knows about my relationship with Ruth. Um, but can I say just a word or two here about Bathsheba? Why didn't she rat out David? She might not have been able to get him removed from the throne because he's king. But she could have spilled the beans on what he did. She could have told the entire kingdom of what he did. And it, would, it may not have cost him his throne, but it would have cost him his image. Yeah. After Uriah dies. Bathsheba is so loyal to David even after his death. The, the only reason that Bathsheba didn't write out David is because of her loyalty to David. The only reason God doesn't rat us out necessarily but the only reason the judgment of God doesn't find us for our sin is because the mercies of God keeps its mouth closed. Right. Hey, I, I still believe the Holy Ghost is the biggest tattletale of them all. What do you mean? Have you ever seen somebody get up and testify and they ain't in the spirit? And the Holy Ghost will say, guess who ain't living right? Yeah. You ever seen somebody get up and sing a song and 
Jesus ain't within 40,000 miles of it. And the Holy Ghost will say, in case you're wondering what's wrong, <laughs> somebody get up and try to preach a lick, and the hack's there, and the hallelujah's there, but the Spirit ain't there. Jesus will say, mm. yeah. I, I want to look tonight, if it'd be fine with you, and, and I need to hurry faster. I want to look at Job's wife. And I've spent some time with her, skimmed with her here and there, but I want to look at Job's wife tonight. Pay attention to those that are forgotten. Pay attention to those that are forgotten, those that suffer in silence. The only time that we hear from Job's wife, we hear from her once. We hear from her in Job chapter number 2. Job chapter number 2, Job has lost all of his kids. He's lost his land. He's lost everything. And he's got boils from the top of his head and the sole of his foot. And Job's wife looks at him, and we can all quote this, and says, Why don't you just curse God and die? And you know my stance there. I, I struggle with people that make her be a negative person in the Bible because this is the truth. And this is not the main part of the message because I preach this here a lot. And, and the folks at our church will watch this. It's fine. They, they understand this too. But if Faith and I, if we are unable to work, if I'm unable to work, that does not just affect me, that affects her. When Job lost his livelihood, that did not just affect Job, that affected his wife. When Job's kids died, and that's who they're referred to in Job 1, Job's sons, Job's daughters. That's not just Job's kids, that's his wife's kids. Well, Chase, are you saying that there's a mistake in the Bible? Absolutely not. Hey, I, I'm going to give you honesty. I believe that this book is deeper than we even have a clue. I, I, I believe God's word is not an accident, and I don't believe God does anything by accident. Job's wife is completely forgotten about from, from Job 1 to Job 42, and it's all on purpose. Hang on. We're going to make it. What do you mean? Job's wife, there are, and, 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 and I'm getting ahead of myself, if you and I were honest, when there are people suffering, there are people that we look to talk to versus others. Go to a funeral home with me real quick, if you will. We, we just had a funeral. Um, a couple weeks ago when I was in Louisville, I had to go to a funeral. Have you noticed that everybody, and this is not a fault, I'm not preaching against anybody, but notice this with me, be real human, real life. Have you noticed that everybody goes only to the people they know? There could be people sitting on the front rows, but you don't know one, two, three, and four, but you know five. So I skip those four, and I go to number five. There, there could be grandkids that are hurting. There, there could be sons and daughters. Or there could be people that are hurting, but because they are not known by people, we skip and go to who we know. Can I say this to you? After a while, that starts being noticeable. Would you agree with that? I feel like I'm in ugly waters and nobody wants to swim with me. The name of the book is Job. And I, I... Why couldn't this book have been named Job and his family's trial? Why couldn't it? Well, Chase, because it's about one man. We have... This is not about one man. This is about a man and his family. We've got the book of Ruth. And we don't even start with the book of Ruth. We don't, we don't start with Ruth. We start with Naomi. We have the book of Esther. And, and in the book of Esther, you don't even have, the first chapter does not even have the word Esther in it. 
Esther doesn't show up until chapter number two. So why, why couldn't we have a book called Job and His Family? There are people that are hurting. There are people that are suffering and silent. There are people that are going through things. And, but because, and, 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 and God's helped me some with this, I believe Job was an extroverted sufferer. Is everybody okay? I know we're, we're digging deep. We're fine. I ain't going to go all night. But listen, have you seen the people that look good but then there are the people you can look at. They're not doing good. Job is covered in boils. Job's in sackcloth and in ashes. So the very first person I'm going to go to is Job. But the problem is person after person after person after person after person comes over to the house and they all talk to Job, but we don't even have a record from Job 1 to Job 42 of anybody looking at his wife and even saying, how you doing? Right. You've been through a lot, how are you doing? How many of you would admit that the role of a woman in the house has changed a lot since olden days. Everybody, everybody that comes over is focused on Job. Everybody's focused on how he's doing. Everybody's focused on tending to him, talking to him, whether it's negative or positive. And you want to know what Job's wife is doing? Give you something to eat. Give you something to drink. Can I make you seat better for you? Can I talk to you? Can, can, can I make your experience more comfortable here at my house? And you want to know what they did when Job's wife brought, brought them something to drink? Just looked and didn't even give her eye contact and said, thank you. Pay attention to those that are often forgotten. Yes. There, I want to give you this for the harbor's sake. I thank God for how this church loves my wife. I thank God for how this church loves my mother-in-law. Loves all of Faith's family. There have been places that I've been to, that we've been to. Chase preached and it's, man, we enjoy her message. <laughs> mm, that's good preaching. Lord God, yeah, that is. And the whole crowd just comes over. Oh, ah, God, that's good preaching. And then I look at her. And I've heard folks defend that by saying, well, if a person wants friends, they must show themselves friends. All right, folks, faith is friendly. <laughs> Yes, sometimes her face says things, but all of our faces <laughs> But here's the facts. There's been places that have asked me to pastor, and I've looked at her, and she's looked at me and said, Honey, we'll do whatever God tells you to do. And she'd have done it in a heartbeat. But I'm sorry. I'm not taking somebody. This will help you in your ordination. I'm not taking somebody to a church where only half of me is accepted. Right. This whole house of it, y'all have loved on her. And, 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 and Job's wife is jealous of her. I, I want to encourage you and let you know something. There are people, maybe not in the house, maybe are in the house, that feel like there's a lot of times that you are overlooked and you don't necessarily know how to handle that. There, there are people in mind in your lives you and I take for granted because we know people in their scenario that are hurting worse 
We need to pay attention to them. She's hurting in silence. Somebody needs to check on her. You look at people in our church, and I, and I need to move faster than I'm moving. You look at people in our church. There are people in our church that are very, very good about checking on people. There are people in our church that are very good about encouraging. People in our church that are always on the bright side of life. However, those people are still human. And whether or not they display it or not, we still need to check on the human. Am I right or wrong? Let's move on if we can. Friends come over. They preach to Job. Here's the problem that we have. Friends come over and they preach to Job. Can, can you and I be honest? Maybe this is good for a Thursday night. Can you and I be honest and say there is a limit to how unselfish we can be? I'll repeat that. I'm not talking about in the spirit. I'm not talking about the God part. I'm talking about in this thing. There's only so much of being looked over that we can handle before it starts bothering us. They come over, they talk to Job, and they pray with Job. And every time they gather around Job, Job's wife's sitting here, and they huddle around, and they pray, and <coughs> give him a big hug, and everybody leaves. Job's wife, Job and his wife are left alone in the house. Job looks at his wife and says, can you believe how they talk to me? Can you believe they think I'm the one in the wrong? Can, can, can you believe, if you and I were honest, I'm talking to us, if you and I were honest, there are times we are selfish sufferers. What do you mean? Because I'm the one that's going through things, because I'm the one that feels like this should be affecting me more than it does her. It affects her more than it does me. I'm the one that's affected by this. There's sometimes we get so tunnel vision on self-suffering that we forget to look at people around us and say, how are you doing? And not to segue into another conversation about us, but truly, hey, and, 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 and this is difficult, this is deep, how many of you would be honest that you've either held the conversation or been in the conversation? The only reason somebody asked you how you were doing is just so they could talk more about how they're doing. Yeah. I'm going to be polite and ask Larry how he's doing. And then as soon as he tells me I'm doing fine, I'm going to say, well, let me tell you more about how I'm doing. Joe might have had the courtesy to look at his wife and say, baby, how you doing? But it's immediately going to turn to, because we don't have record of it, it's immediately going to turn to, can you believe he said I'm the one that sinned? Let's move on if we can. Everybody okay? Pretty sure I got about half the hat that's here. Praise the Lord. Job is going to move on. What is Job's wife doing the entire time this is going on? Hey, can, can, can I give some folks credit? I see folks. And look, I'm your pastor. I'm a preacher. I get it. I see folks suffer in silence when they'd be 100% right to open their mouth. I see folks that are treated horribly. And they take it over and over and over and over and never open their mouth. I see folks break, get broken hearted over and over and over. Sorry. How many of you have ever said something like this? Well, they've taken much more than I ever would. We 
are like 20 some chapters into Job, and Job finally decides to pray to God. But who's he going to pray for? I'm going to pray for me. I tell you, sometimes when I've noticed unselfish people, I'll get a text message from unselfish sufferers, and it'll say something like this. I know you've got a lot on your heart. I know you've got a lot of things going on. And, and they'll even sometimes run me through some things I've got going on. And then they'll say, but when all that's done, can you pray for me? And you want to know what that whole text message says? I can't believe that I'm having to ask prayer for myself because I'm so used to praying for everybody else. Can I say something? I'm just going to say that everybody in the house is named Joe. Okay? How many of you all either extroverted sufferers or introverted? How many of you all know somebody that's suffering? Can I encourage Job to do something? And then this is this is hurtful and it's not the best thing in the world to say. But I know you got it rough or rough. I know. But take time to pray with the people that everybody's forgetting. Is that fair? So he prays. Job prays and gets word of God. Hey, I forgot about Job 3. I'll hit Job 3 and we'll finish up here in just a second. Job 3 is where Job decides that he's going to look up to God. He's going to say, cursed be the day that my mother gave birth to me. Cursed be the day that my lips gave suck. Job's not wishing to die. He's just wishing he was never born. Can I, can I say just a word? And, and I feel like we're already deeper than deep, so we should be okay right here. Can I say a word about suicide? Let's say God answers that prayer for Job. Job looks up at God and says, I'm tired of living, putting into it. Hey, I've seen the parents when their kids take their own life. Yeah. I've seen the spouses when the spouse takes their own life. I've seen grandparents when the grandkids. Hey, can, can, I, can I say this to you? And I'm not talking about, I, I'm off of suicide specifically, but can I say this to everybody in the house? If you decide to stop living, you decide to stop living your life, and remember, there's a difference in living your life and waiting to die. If you decide to stop living your life, what happens to your spouse? You decide to stop living your life, what happens to your kids? You decide to stop living your life, what happens to your siblings? What happens to the people you love? Well, chase nothing. They just do without me. I want to talk to you guys as Job's wife for a minute. I want to talk to our, our church family as Job's wife for a minute. Just because you're overlooked doesn't mean you're not important. Just because you're overlooked doesn't mean no one cares. All right. All of Job's friends come after all that happens. Job stands up for himself. Job stands up for himself. Job stands up for himself. Job stands up for who? Himself. What about why? Hey, am I okay talking about her? Is everybody good? Well, Chase, you ain't got Bible for that. That's a problem. There's a lady that 
just as much a part of this as Job is, and we ain't got nothing for him. Karen, this is this is September, so it'll be October, probably sometime late March-ish. We're gonna have ordination. And for better or worse, Courtney is just a, just as much a part of Josh's success as Josh is. Caitlin is just as much a part of Dakota's success as Dakota is. I mean, I don't necessarily believe in the whole first lady of the church business and deaconess and deacon. But I do declare this. Caitlin and Courtney will be in leadership roles. Just as much as Karen Bowe, just as much as Kim Fleshauer, Nancy Lunsford, Jessica Besto. I guarantee you, and, and I, I'll hit my last thing and I'll be done. I guarantee you, if Job's first ten kids, the first set, if, if they could have, if I could ask them, hey, who raised you? Do y'all know what they tell me? I guarantee you, none of them would look at me and say, Dad did a real good job. I'll guarantee you if I set if I set all ten of them down, what seven daughters, three sons? If I set them all down, who raised you? I'll guarantee you they both look at me and say, "Mom and Dad." Hey, I feel like this is all about negative stuff. Let me give you some positives. There are people that notice you. There are people that get blessed by you. You are a bother to no one. You are not a hindrance. You're not someone that's a burden to life. I feel like this is encouraging. and ain't nobody smiling. This is as close to Joe Lundstein as I'm going to get, folks. <laughs> this just hit me. Can I give you one thing? Too much suffering will end your thankfulness. Give me one conversation of Job and his wife where he looks at his wife and says, I love you. Give me one conversation where he looks at his wife and says, hey, I appreciate you for staying by my side. Give me one conversation where Job looks at his wife and says, hey, thank you for making me breakfast this morning. Give me one conversation where he appreciates her. Hey, thank you for getting out of bed. It ain't there. Can anybody admit that suffering takes a toll on our praise and suffering takes a toll on our appreciation? All right, let's finish it up. I'm dead. That is like 42 chapters in here. Good or good? Faith said that to me in her mouths. Just like you always say, God's good or good. <laughs> and it was an inside joke. Nobody got it. <laughs> Bobby Bell married us, and he just looked at me and said, Oh, he is good. <laughs> we'll get to the end and we'll close. Job shouted when Job 42 happened. And Job's wife was relieved. Man, don't say that. that that's Jason. Hey, Jesus. Job 42 hits, and it's the moment that God gives Job his paycheck. Job had more in the end than he had in the beginning. And that's book. That's KJV. That's NIV. That's ESV. That's CLV. What's CLV? It's Chase Lane version. <laughs> you have nothing in Job 42 that says Job's family had more in the end than they had in the beginning. You've got no version that says Job's wife had more in the end than she had in the beginning. Job 1 through 42 is Job's job. And you all know what this woman 
found that in her soul and her spirit when Job gets blessed so much and he shouts glory, his boils are healed, his family is just blessed and Job gets to see his sons and his sons' sons and four generations. You don't know what Job's wife said. Job looked and he said, baby, look how much God's blessing me. Look at it. I've been through so much. God brought me through so much, honey. And Job's wife just, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God's good to you, baby. God's good to you. If we were honest, we can be forgotten so long that it makes it impossible to be happy for other people. Now I'm preaching us as the victims. It's easy for us to be forgotten, but if we were honest, we forget other people. Preaching Raymond Garrett, and it, it Bob, I've had conviction like that before, but it's probably never hit me as strong. I've, I've been on funerals where I've went to certain people because I knew them better. And I loved them. Preacher Raymond Garrett's funeral hit, and there's a lady on the second row. Her and her husband just saw it. And I had no clue. But Larry, there's just something in me. Hey, go, go love them. I just walked up and hey, her. And I just looked at them. Nope. And just got both of them up and squeezed them. I said, the same Jesus that got to pack all or whoever he is to you through every trial. We same Jesus take care of you. If, if you and I were honest, because truthfully, in this house, in, in, in normal church services, it's, can we admit something? It's easier to play the victim than it is to take responsibility. I get, the, one of the reasons this is a real difficult, I'd rather preach time than preach this. Well, why? Because I preach this, and Josh, and I'm not talking about here, I'm talking about general human beings. Everybody in the house goes back to a time they were a victim, and they were forgotten about. That's right. I was overlooked. That's right. Nobody called, nobody prayed, nobody knew nothing happened to me. But what if God wants us to focus on the people in our life that are suffering in silence and we're treating them like it's a normal day? Yeah. Yeah. Because after a while, those people, they just remember how to smile. Yeah. Okay, what I do is I look in the mirror. That looks right. And they remember how to laugh. And they remember all those things. Ain't you glad that God cares deeper for us than that? I want to give you this and we'll close. I want to give everybody in the house something. Okay? To the best of my knowledge, we only have one chapter and... and Golden, I, 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 he can help me more. You preachers, you deacons, y'all are, and I mean this, y'all are Bible students. Y'all can help me more. You ladies. To the best of my knowledge, Job only really has one chapter of victory. I'm talking from verse 1 to the end. You only have one real chapter where Job just got right to paycheck. Right. Whether she sees it or not, God wrote Job's wife more checks than he ever did Job. Hey, mark it down. This has been one of the most silent church services I've ever been a part of in this church. I'm hoping it's a good thing because I just moved here. <laughs> what do you mean? When the trial first happened, God gave her grace.
when she lost her kids. Every time her heart broke, God gave her more grace. When Job got sick, God gave her more grace. Every time she was ignored, God helped her. God blessed her. Every time she was overlooked, God helped her. God blessed her. We have two good chapters on Job where he really prays and really gets in touch with God. But because of how much she was overlooked, can you imagine how many times? She had nobody to talk to. There was no friends. There was no family. So who do you think she talked to? She talked to God. Hey, honey, Joe's wife, I don't even know you. Hey, can I pause real quick? And we're done. Isn't it a shame we don't even know what her name is? Talking about death. Can I give you one of the saddest things? What, uh, what was it? World War II? World War I? There's a lot of tombstones that don't even have names on them. All they have are X's. And some of them don't even have X. Some of them just blank piece of concrete. Can I ask you something about that? Don't you think they had a name? Didn't some mother give birth to them? But as far as this world's concerned, they'll never know. Job's wife plays a gigantic part. No matter how much he wants to disagree, she prayed for him the entire time. But you want to know what the whole world's going to know? Every age, every generation's going to know? Her first name's Job. Her last name's Wife. When Courtney went up to Attica and preached Golden, she, she said, she said the first part, what, twice, two times she went up there? And it's nothing against them. Wonderful people. Y'all went up there with us in revival. First couple of times she went up there, his name was Preacher Josh. Her name was Preacher Josh's wife. Thankfully, there's a few of them up there now that know she's Courtney. But ain't that sad for her to have such an awesome part in Scripture and nobody will ever even know her name? She is, and I'm going to give her some praise when we're done. She is the poster child to teach us and to teach everybody that you can suffer in silence and come out on the great side. Let's stand to our feet tonight. One blessing. One blessing. Hey, can I ask you something? How many of you through tonight's lesson, there's people that are on your mind and on your heart you need to check on? Hey, I'm going to give you something. And I don't know if tonight was a good lesson or a bad lesson or in between. So since I don't know, I'm going to put her, I'm going to put her in the ditch real quick. Hey, about six of you raised your hand and said, you know, people, you need to check on. Guess what? That's faith. Faith without works is dead. So if you've got people you need to check on and you don't do it, guess what? It doesn't matter if this was one of the best things you've ever heard in your life. Chase, I never thought of that scripture that way. doesn't matter if the video feed gets 600... Friends and family days have like 700 views. I told Rob, our friends and family days got like 700 views on it. Put Rob, Rob Bogue is on the front cover of that video. Put Rob Bogue in a pair of shorts. <laughs> views just start dropping like crazy. It doesn't matter how many views this thing gets. If we do nothing with what we got in God's house, it still wasn't that good. Is that right? Yeah. Hey, I'm looking forward to Sunday. And I really am. And I, I mean this. And I've preached Job's wife as a hero tonight. Maybe I'll give her a little bit of negativity. Hey, can I say this to you? There are sometimes you and I choose to suffer alone when God has put people in our life that we can reach out to. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh, God. I'll preach.
preach another 30. Hey, folks, I'm telling you, I believe this, and Pastor Bob will remember this. There was a man, preacher friend of ours, killed himself back earlier in the year. David Coffin called me about it. One of the best preachers that I knew. And he had 50 preachers he could have reached out to. Had a wife, had kids. Hey, can I, can I say something to you? It's the devil's good pleasure to make you feel like you're all alone. But you've got people. You need to decide that you're going to reach out and not be stranded. Amen. I'm looking forward to Sunday morning. I really am. I'm excited and excited. Just hope I ain't killed for you tonight. I'm looking forward to Sunday. Um, announcements. Um, November 11th through the 13th is our Thanksgiving services here at the church. Pastor Bob will be kicking us off. Please pray much for the services upcoming. Pray much for our folks we've got sick. Any other announcements? Yeah, man. It's been a good place to be. If there's folks you need to check on, please do that. Folks that are on your heart, please be about that. I love you, church. You don't, you don't know how much I love you. And I'm sure you can say the same thing to me. I appreciate you much. And the fear of the Lord, you're at liberty to go until Sunday morning at 10. Go pray and come pray and rejoice in between. God bless you.